All right, we have joining us from Abuja studio, a retired group captain of the Nigerian Air Force, Sadiq Shehu. Good morning and thanks uh, for joining us. Good morning. Good morning and thank you for having me. Yes, now when you uh, heard of this um, uh, development, thankfully Nigeria has been spared, uh, you know, a, a real tragic situation there of the uh, vice president's um, helicopter going down. Uh, what, what went through your mind? Well, uh, what was in my mind as somebody who has uh, uh, interest in aviation issues, being a security consultant and also with uh, some expertise on aviation safety, it is something of concern. Because uh, whenever you have an aviation accident, so many things come to mind. It could be human error. It could be uh, mechanical error. It could be regulatory error. Mm -hmm. So for anybody having a stake in the aviation industry, he would like to know what actually happened with a view to preventing such occurrences, with a view to changing regulations, maybe with a view of changing procedures. So that's right. what came to my mind as, a, as somebody who is a, a stakeholder. All right. Having that at the back of your mind, mm. uh, if we have to take it from uh, the statement released by uh, the, the Caverton helicopters that it was, it was a product of bad weather, uh, was that too quick uh, as a statement to give us reason why uh, what happened happened? I'm losing them. Group okay. Captain Show, can Sorry, you hear please, me I now? I hear your questions. All right, if you can hear yes, me now. Yes, I can hear you now, please. The question, please. Okay, very good. Yes, I can hear uh, you. Very good. Now, I am, I am asking that there was a statement by the, uh, uh, the helicopters of the, the makers of the helicopter who say, who say, sorry, not the makers, but the company uh, that uh, gave out the helicopter, who said that the, 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 the crash landing was caused by uh, bad weather, as the case may be. Uh, would you subscribe to that? One would say that was too quick uh, as, as, as a reason given for what happened. Uh, in my honest opinion, I think it is too hasty. In my honest opinion, I think it is too hasty for the uh, uh, leaders of Coverton Helicopter to conclude so hastily that the uh, air crash was uh, caused by weather. Uh, air crashes can be, co uh, can be caused by so many things, and I think it's only after an investigation is carried out that we can know what caused. So for the, uh, Mr. Chomps, I think the CEO of Coverton, he was the one, I had him saying that... Uh, the aircraft uh, crashed because of weather just when the pilot was about to touch down. Well, the logical conclusion is that the pilot told Mr. Chomps because Mr. Chomps was not the pilot. Now, in all honesty, if you want to be professional, even if we hear from the pilot and we must hear from him, it should not be conclusory that the air crash was caused by weather. There could be many other issues, uh, and I'm sure the AIB, which is under the Ministry of Transportation, is going to do the needful. And for an aircraft investigator, there is this saying in air, air, I mean in aviation safety, that an accident is a chain of events, starting mm -hmm. right from how the pilot slept uh, two days ago, mm -hmm. how current is the pilot, how many hours he has flown, how long does he know the route, what is the, uh, uh, the, the maintenance record of the aircraft, and of course the weather that was mentioned. But what I am saying, we cannot at this stage confine it only to weather. And I'm sure the AIB will cast a very big net to look at all the factors that might have led mm. to, uh, to, to the weather. Now, yes. if we even now look at the weather that the, the, the Coverton uh, people have said, there are uh, responsibilities for the operators of any aircraft, whether helicopter or fixed wing, to obtain up-to-date weather forecast of the area in which they are going to operate. And uh, for every aircraft, like the AW139, uh, it has an operating manual, which is called uh, AW139, uh, 4FM-4 HD. In that manual, there are weather minima. That means weather conditions which the aircraft should not exist. So even if we are talking of weather, still it does not absolve the uh, operators or the pilot of responsibility to acquaint himself with the latest information of the weather in the operating area. And if possible, if the weather is above the minima, either by civil Nigeria civil aviation regulations or by the operating manual of the aircraft, even the possibility of cancelling a flight, whoever the VIP is, is always there. Mm. Now, uh, let me be fair to him. I had him also saying just when the aircraft is about to land. So what comes to me, 
with my knowledge of aviation is that he is telling us that the approach to landing was okay. The flight was okay. The aircraft didn't have any problem until when the pilot was about to land. Now I am assuming, supposing it was at the point of landing that the weather changed, yes, there is a possibility. In uh, aviation weather, there is what is called wind shear or wind gust. You know, an mm. aircraft lands into, into wind and takes off into wind. So the direction of the wind is very important for deceptive an aircraft, whether landing or taking off. Now, wind shear or wind gust may happen near the ground. That is a situation where there is a sudden change in mm. direction and velocity of the wind. Uh, while looking at uh, ICAO regulations, there are certainly some accidents that have been caused by wind shear. Now, if it is a wind shear, we may, here again, I'm still speculating, we may excuse the pilot because wind shear may not be foreseen. But having said that, the bottom line is that it is hasty to make a conclusive statement as to the cause of this crash. All we right. have to look okay. all from the capacity of the pilot, his currency, how many mm. hours, what is his even familiarity with that landing area. Uh, I want to believe with due respect that Kaba is not uh, you know, a designated uh, landing area. So all these uh, door helicopters have the you know, capacity and the opportunity to choose any landing area, but then familiarity with the place. Was yes. Reiki carried out? A okay. pilot landing in place. Was yes. Reiki carried out? A okay. pilot landing in an undesignated landing area is supposed to make even a physical examination of the landing surface. Very interesting grass, points. Is it paved? Is it marshy? And all those things. <laughs> Very interesting points you have raised there. Of course, we know that the Accident Investigation Bureau, uh, the IAB... Or Sorry, AIB, please, I'm not hearing you. Okay, we do understand that the AIB is actually through with the preliminary uh, investigation. And uh, I believe you have just touched on, you know, what, you know, should really go into this preliminary investigation. But to give us a very clear idea, what... Uh, really uh, goes into this preliminary investigation and what uh, should we expect from the next line of uh, investigations? Okay, like I said, uh, an aircraft investigator will cast a very wide net mm. because uh, uh, aviation accidents are a culmination of a series of events with one triggering effect or the immediate cause causing the accident. So for the investigators, like I said, they will look at the human element. What do I mean by the human element? How many pilots were on board? That aircraft is supposed to carry, if it is a day operation, to carry a minimum of one fi uh, pilot. If it is a night operation, to carry uh, a minimum of two pilots. How current are the pilots? That is the human side. How often have they flown that route? That's also the human side. Then they move to the technical side. The technical side, what are the maintenance records of the aircraft? Then now they look at environmental factors. Environmental factors, they look at the aircraft performance uh, minima in which crosswind or headwind is. So every aircraft has a maximum crosswind or, 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 or tailwind on which it can operate. For the AW, AW39, I'm sure, checking the manual, it says if there is a crosswind, the maximum crosswind you can have or headwind is five, is, is five knots. Or 15 knots, 15 knots, I think it's 15 knots. Mm. You also have to look now. These people have to go to the physical area and also check the landing side. Was it properly selected? For this particular aircraft, we, for any other aircraft, you need the landing side to be a very firm ground. As much as possible, as flat as possible. Slopes can be very dangerous for a landing, for a landing aircraft. For this AW39, it is recommended if there is any slope, it should be maximum 5 degree slope. That you have to look at that. If the place is marshy, can the place support the weight of the aircraft? So this is what I'm saying. There will be the technical, there will be the human, there will be the environmental factors. Okay. Mm. So I expect AIB to cast a very wide net yes. to come with their conclusion as to what might have caused this accident. All right. Uh, a lot of people have been asking the question as to, is it a norm for uh, any member of the presidency to hire a private uh, helicopters for going around any time uh, from what you have heard or from, from your knowledge of how things uh, used to be, is it a norm for the president, vice president to go around with uh, hired chartered, uh, uh, chartered or private, private. Uh, helicopters or aircraft? Well, uh, here we have to look at uh, protocol issues. We also have to look at uh, security issues. The movement of VIP, like the president and the vice president and their families, is supposed to take security into consideration. 
Now, for security also uh, into consideration, we might insist that whenever these people are moving, they use official aircraft or presidential aircraft. But then we have to ask of availability. We also have to ask about propriety. Now, I have one ask this question I've always said. Supposing this aircraft was an Air Force aircraft, which we know it is not. Mm -hmm. Supposing it crashes, wouldn't there be question as to the propriety of using an official aircraft to go for campaigning, for political campaigning? Uh -huh. We may never know. So what I am seeing, this is a lacuna again in our rules. Mm -hmm. In other countries checking international global best practices, yes, in the United States, maybe the answer is clear for the president. The answer is clear for the president. I want to believe that his security, his protocol, will never accept that the president should move in a chartered aircraft. It is less clear in the issue of the vice president. And as far as I know, there is no a regulation that guides us. Accident happens sometimes, you draw conclusions from them and you draw lessons. Maybe this is a time to specify that our VIPs up to a certain level should not move without official uh, uh, transport. Mm. If we look at other countries, okay. uh, we have to go to the bastion of democracy, the United States. We see the president and the vice president and other people using Air Force One for their mm -hmm. campaigning. However, the American democracy is very advanced. In as much as people in America accept that the president or vice president must move in absolute security, I want to believe that there will be a very big debate here if the president and the vice president and all his campaign team are using presidential aircraft. All right. But there's also be something beautiful we can take from the Americans. In the Americans I learned, as long as the journey is politically related, mm. the president or his campaign team always reimburses the United States Air Force for the use of Air Force One. Okay. So maybe we could learn from that. All right. All right. We have to leave you here now. Group Captain Sadiq Shehu retired. Thank you so much for uh, giving us insight into these issues. Thank you it's very a much. pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes.